What is up, bros? We're Josh here, and today's video is version 2 of the Yukikaze that we've gotten, and still currently work in progress, as you can see in the top right corner, so stats are subject to change. What's exactly changed on this ship, though, is it's gotten speed boost now. It was kind of a lackluster ship at first, because it just seemed to not have many tools to use for how much of a quote-unquote aggro-style IGN Torp Destroyer that it is trying to be. What I mean by that is it still has the 8-kilometer Torps that are extremely fast, and basically that's what this is. Is. It's going to be uh, basically a Kagira with F3 Torps, 8 kilometers, extremely fast, but with this setup, you only have smoke, and now you have the additional uh, speed boost. So, how does it feel? Does it feel different? It is nice to have that speed boost on this version. You do feel like you can maybe engage a few more situations or disengage if you really want to, and with this ship, it actually felt a little different, but still the same in the end because it's in the end it's just a speed boost it's not like you got a torp reload booster i thought that would be kind of cool uh, maybe a main uh, gun booster that would have been even cooler but in the end this ship still at tier 8 and in this game right now we are bottom tier so this i thought was a pretty good one we got to see a good mix of when i was testing this of being bottom tier being top tier being bottom and top tier with cvs and this one kind of showed the good potential of the ship also the downside and one of the downside is is you're going to be extremely well you're going to be extremely good at what you do and extremely bad at what you can't do and what i mean by that is things outside 10 kilometers you're going to have a tough time doing damage consistently to one of the things about this ship though is that if you are top tier you are an absolute bully when it comes to this because your torps are so fast especially if you are top tier tier 6 and tier 7 battleships tend to be relatively slow but as you're going to see against this alaska this is one of the big downsides of a ship that's maybe a tad more agile faster and most of the time a radar ship or something you know there's going to be lots of radar when you're going if you're bottom tier against tier 9s and tier 10s is you're going to have the t-rex arms of torpedoes that this ship has and they're going to get oh so close oh so close and in the end they aren't just gonna hit so would those have hit if they were 10 kilometer kagero torps probably they would have been a little bit slower and they would have gone uh, two kilometers more than that so that probably would have been a dead alaska but still that's where you're going to be a tad weak um luckily he isn't really radaring right now so we can go a tad aggressive luckily the f3 torpedoes still have a pretty good reload but what i saw was you had to get a tad aggressive you had to play relatively smart if you were bottom tier because so many radars and other destroyers luckily you do have a very low detection so even against stuff like the gearing the shimikazes also the kageros i didn't i wouldn't say i didn't fear them but i wasn't as fearful as let's say you know another tier 8 or something like that because your detection is so low you have 5.4 it's extremely low and you have the ability with the speed boost to get away from those ships if you need to also going against those ships you do have the ability to spam those torps that are most likely going to hit them if you do get into a, a kind of a dog fighting situation so that is kind of nice you feel a tad more comfortable also with the three smokes and the three speed boosts that come with just the standard premium version of the reload or the uh the consumables I switched up superintendent for BFT and it felt really good on the ship. So that's one thing that was kind of nice and I was able to go a tad more aggressive with the guns and so I could kind of just, you know, be a tad more gunboaty, I guess, but I'm not going to go gunboaty this early in the game. I want to kind of had I'm going to have like a a little bit more life later into the game. Even though I have 18,000 uh at tier 8, which is pretty good actually. I don't want to start throwing away early game just in case it's needed. Obviously, he pops radar here. Now, again, I will say, if you are top-tiered, you're a bully in this. You can beat a lot of other Tier 8 destroyers. You can beat most Tier 7 DDs gun for gun, especially with BFT. And against Tier 6s, it's just kind of a joke. Again, you have that ability to basically get the first salvo on everything. And being able to take that BFT, you do have a chance of actually doing a lot of gunboat-style play. Um, there was a couple of games where we actually were <laughs> chasing down ships because our torps couldn't reach them because they were going away and so we just kind of went all guns now one thing i did potentially play around with is changing up uh radio location as you see a four point skill for uh aft to maybe get a little bit more into the game so i thought about that uh in the end i think probably radio location is still the best you may be able to throw an aft captain in there somewhere if you don't want radio location I just think that if you need to get into a spot where you can disengage, especially from another destroyer, 
then maybe they go dark. I just think it's worth it, potentially with Blind Torps. Um, but there's so many situations like this. As you see, if you just look at the minimap really fast, there is like this arc around me, and you're just worthless. Everything's outside your range. T eight kilometers is your effective range of torps. Obviously, if something's pushing into you, you can launch them at maybe nine and a half or so, nine kilometers, but your torps are extremely fast. However, if something is in range and they don't have hydro, you're probably going to hit them in most situations, so that's kind of nice. Um, obviously, this minnow probably has hydro, and it's going to be extremely agile, but the torps are really, really, really fast. So you have to pick your targets, like, you have to be smart about it. Positioning is a big thing with this ship. But if you are able to get into spots where you can get within range, not get radar, not get spotted, you're pretty nasty. I mean, this ship is going to do some damage. And the thing is, especially if a battleship is within 8 kilometers and going to stay within that range, you're probably going to hit them with at least one. And it's an IJN Torp, so it's going to hit extremely hard. Uh, like going against this Kagero, I have no fears against this. Uh, you, especially with BFT. I just don't think you need four smokes. Maybe four speed boosts is kind of nice, but I just don't think Superintendent has much value on this ship because unless you want to go like a full gunboat setup with this, I feel like the BFT makeup is kind of nice. Your Torp reload is so fast anyway. I don't think Torp, or, uh, Torp Armament is kind of worth three points. I would rather buff up the guns a little bit. I kind of wish Wargaming would have gone more for like a complete aggro IGN DD. I thought that would be so cool. Getting the French reload booster I thought would be awesome. And again, against the, a battleship, these are so fast. There's no way they're going to get detected. Uh, and there's no way they're going to be able to turn in time. So we are going to pump a lot of damage into that. But as you see, 8.6 behind him. Actually, if those if I would have been a Kagero, probably would have got some collateral damage on that Musashi. But since he's outside 9 kilometers or outside 8 kilometers, I'm going to get absolutely nothing. And I'm going to get Minotard right here. So this kind of sucks, but we will get the kill on that Kagero. So that's all that matters. And if any of you have ever played against a Minotaur, when you're in a DD, your health is going to disappear pretty quick. But as you see, something was within my Torp range. And that's going to be, you know it's going to take torps it's just a matter of time and as you see already 40 uh, 40 seconds left on the torp reload that's what the thing that's really nice about this ship is that the torp reload is pretty damn quick however there are so many games and especially this is an acb game where there's really not much you're going to be able to do um there's so many times that i was playing this now i had a couple big games like this one's a decent uh i just want to this is a good example of what you can kind of get on i would say a normal game um obviously there are no cvs uh cv games are so hit and miss on if you get detected or not by the cv we went against the double cv game and that's just no destroyer is gonna be able to do much on that but there were other games that you are just not going to get ships that push and you're not going to be able to do anything that's one of the things that's a big downside of the ship is you are very dependent on the enemy basically pushing into a situation uh that doesn't happen all the time so that is a big downside there was two or three games I was playing this on stream where literally I just I, I wasn't able to do damage. It was impossible because no matter what, everything was outside my eight kilometer range. And, and that sucks. And that's the big downside of this ship. But overall, I think it offers something still unique. And I don't think we're going to see much. I think this is probably the final version of the ship. It, it was lacking something. I wish they would have given it something else. Like, I thought the maybe just make a full aggro ship would have been really cool with the reload consumable on its main guns. I thought that'd be badass because it'd be something to actually fear. And right now, honestly, you're not really fearing IGN Torp boats that much. It's just everything else is better than them right now. That would have offered this thing something crazy unique. I also thought maybe we would see, like we saw with the Harakaze, another uh, collab ship in that we would potentially see like a... Uh, multiple hall where that has an a hall a b hall and a c hall offering multiple different play styles this basically what you see is what you get so does adding the uh the speed boost help i think it does i mean it gives you a little bit of comfort when it comes to the ship because even though you are kind of slow you have the ability to one get into positions to maybe get torpedoes on something and two uh getting torpedoes into or getting into a spot where you can disengage from taking damage but as you see right here, I mean, that minnow is at 7.8, that guy's at 12. I, there's nothing you can really do in so many situations. So you're kind of just, I think even at this time on the stream, I'm just like, well, I can't do anything. So that, let's just cap, I guess. And it, it feels like you're in that spot a lot. It, it's the ups and downs of, 
of having very short, very fast torps is you have a lot, you, you have an advantage in certain situations, but a disadvantage in so many others. So again, one of the, you know, as I said earlier, it, it's really, really strong at what it does and it's really, really weak at what it can't do. And it sounds stupid to say that, but other destroyers are way more consistent. Um, there are so many situations where I would have done more damage with the Kagero, the tech tree ship. There are more uh, with the Harakaze, the other tier, tier 8 uh, IGN premium destroyer. There are so many situations where just adding that two kilometers, it doesn't seem like a lot, but adding two kilometers, um, I would have had more damage in almost, I wouldn't say every game, but a lot of the games. And this one, only having the eight kilometer range is really a, even 8.3, 8.4, if he turns away at all, I just can't do anything to this. And it, 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 it does get a tad... Um, Annoying, I guess, is, a, is is maybe too strong of a word, but it like even against this this uh, North Carolina, if I was a Kigero, I would have already sent torps at this guy. Now I can't. So again, if you are top tier against going against sixes and sevens, you are an absolute monster. Uh, New Mexico's insert any tier six battleship. Basically, you're gonna pick on those because they're relatively slow. They're relatively, um, you know fat they, they can't really move that quick they're not agile and your torps are going to smash them in the face and just like this north carolina anything that's especially a battleship anything that's within your effective range of torps is going to go back to port pretty quick so that is kind of fun i, I had another pretty good game when i was top tier but everyone always gives me crap whenever i post a, a video of a work in progress ship against bottom tier when i'm when i'm top tier against bottom tier ships and they're always like well how does it do it against top tier ships well it's going to be the same thing basically what you're going to see is a lot more radars and you're going to see potentially a lot more planes and a lot more destroyers that are going to be a bigger threat to you however you can still do this regardless tier 8 ships tier 10 ships as you saw we hit the amagi on the other side hit the others it's just maps are bigger when you're going against this so there's going to be less situations where you can honestly do this um, still though, I mean, they're IGN torps. If you hit like four or five of them, you're already near hundred K. It's just getting into a spot that you can get there. And so there are going to be lots of games where you're going to feel pretty worthless in this ship. However, there's a lot of games where you're going to punish a mistake very quickly. And that ship's going to have nothing it can do against you because your torps are so damn fast. So, um, there is that trade off. And for me, I'm not really an IGN DD player I, I i like going for a more consistent would i take this over the cossack or the benson or the loyang or the lightning or insert a bunch of other ships that i enjoy much more no but does it add some kind of fun and a bit of an aggression and and some situations that you wouldn't get elsewhere uh yeah it does and you know well you could say well is this ship worth anything or should i just buy a kikero uh, the deck tree ship and put the torp uh acceleration that's something too you have a point so now this is going to be part of the collaboration and obviously this is uh this is you uh, yukikaze versus shimikaze and i think we get a tad of an advantage here because i don't think they really shoot their guns per normal shimikaze i was hoping to get a little cheeky uh hit on this guy but um there, there is there is legit questions when people bring up well is it worth it and um i don't know yet this is still work in progress, so we haven't seen. I will do a Is It Worth It video when it comes to this. Um, now I think this is going to be a, get a lot more value for people that are more interested in the uh, than the crossover for Azure Lane. So that will add some kind of value to a lot of people. Um, but is it the same as a Kigero with the Torp, uh, the Torp Acceleration? Yeah, it's pretty close. And there's a lot of situations, as you see, I still have two smokes left. And again, finding spots to do the damage to warrant the smokes instead of like torp reload or something like that. You know, I, I could see there being something else that you would want with the Gagero and, and this kind of being something that is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's different enough. You do get a different play style, but you can get this elsewhere for technically free. Um, but still, this is the final version we've gotten so far, and the next version where you get speed boost. Still, though, I, I feel like a lot of people are excited for this ship, for the crossover, and um, but as the ship itself, again, it's going to be good at what it does, especially if you get top tier. You're going to be an absolute bully of a destroyer, 
And if you're going to get bottom tier, you're still going to be able to do stuff. You just got to find the right situations to then get things done. Overall, though, I did have some fun with this ship. Uh, it's been a while since I've really played the Kagero or, and or another ship like that. I tend to stick with something that's a tad more gunboaty. So like the Harakaze, I would prefer over this ship. But still, the F3 brings something relatively unique. You are kind of a more aggressive destroyer. And still, you can still get things done. Even at bottom tier, most destroyers still can because of the ability. And of course, with having the three smokes and the three speed boosts already, you can kind of spec into BFT, which I found to be quite nice and really kind of make this a bit more... Um, of a destroyer that can really defend itself. So overall though, this is the second version of the Yukikaze that we've seen. Basically the only main change is we've gotten speed boost. I wouldn't expect anything crazy changed from this version we have here. Now it isn't obviously finalized yet, still work in progress, but still a uh, cool ship, I guess, if you're interested in this, especially if you really like or want a premium version of a Kagero. And um, we may see some cool cosmetics for this as well. But anyways, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.